You fool! I've been trained in your Jedi arts by Count Dooku! Hello, ev <clears throat> Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Xerath Prevails. Folks, today we've got the Faction Essentials video for Separatist Droids, and we've already done the Faction Essentials for the rest of the Separatists, but we do want to... Uh, cover the droids. Uh, this is the most fun team, in my opinion, and they can be really strong on offense, and they're okay on defense. Traditionally, they've been a defensive team. Uh, they're more of an offensive team now, in my opinion. Also, what I'm going to show you in this video is how to mod this kit at uh, this team. Before that, I'm going to show you guys the the essential, like, we can't talk about all of the mechanics. There's so many moving parts, as you might expect from a an army made completely of droids, but then I'm going to show you guys some clips of how to counter some of the teams you're going to be facing because there are a lot of teams that this team that this squad just destroys on offense, and I, I want to start putting clips in my faction essential videos because I think having some context is really going to help. So uh, we're going to do that in just a sec. I do want to take just a minute to tell you guys, to remind you, if you want to support this channel for free, please, I would, <laughs> all you've got to do is hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment in the comment area, do both if you think of it, or if you want to, if you, if I had my druthers, you would, and uh, I don't know when the last time, you should just give me an upvote just for the use of the word druthers, but otherwise, folks, Otherwise, folks, we are. Uh, it also really helps if you hit that sub button. If you even if you're not going to watch many of my other videos, uh, you know you can just ignore me. And I would just recommend not hitting the bell because I never do, and I don't want to be a hypocrite. But you can do that if you want to be adventurous, and if you actually have a bell to click. Someone told me the other day they looked all over for it just to be a contrarian and couldn't find it. So, I mean, jokes on them, I suppose. But. We're going to go to the faction now. We're going to talk about the... We're going to go into the game, folks. Prepare yourselves. I'll prepare myself. Whoa, whoa, madness. What? We're in the game? How do we... Madness. <laughs> I'm so dumb. Okay. <laughs> So we're going to talk about the mechanics of this game, of the squad first. It is all over the place. So everyone has a an AoE on this squad. And everyone, except for Droidica and, or, and Newt, I guess. You guys can't even see Newt because my face is literally blocking your view. You can see Newt there, but now I'm going to block him because I don't want you guys to have to look at him. Because I don't want to have to look at him, but that's the price I pay. I'm willing to sacrifice for you guys. If you haven't upvoted yet, that's another consideration I'm sacrificing for you. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sounding more and more like General Grievous every day. Uh, but what, what's going on essentially with the General Grievous team, you're trying to inflict target lock on everyone that you possibly can. You're trying to AoE them to death. You gain a ton of turn meter based off of get, hitting characters that have target lock. And if they're target locked, they can't hit you back. It, that's, that's essentially it. You're doing a ton of AoEs. You want to protect all of your squad except for Magna Guard. If he dies once, that's fine. I mean, it, that's like the final death, but he does, he can die, and uh, hopefully you've done enough damage. Newt can die twice, so you, you kind of want him to get hit first. Uh, and Magna Guard, actually, if you start with him, he, he puts everyone else in stealth besides himself and Newt. So if you're using Droidica, for instance, he is... Uh, Droidica is also going to be stealthed. One one thing to keep in mind though, folks, we're not going to talk about Droidica much at all because he's kind of a worthless sack and the rest of them are way better. So we're, he's going to get the scoot or the boot in favor of Newt. Wow, just came up with that rhyme on the fly. Another reason to upvote, folks. This is important. So the other thing I want to point out is for Zetas, you want all the ones that you see here except for maybe Droidicas. If you're going to use Droidica a lot, the Zetas nice. If you're not going to use the Droidica a lot, then don't waste your Zetas. But uh, the order of Zetas that you want to apply them is B1 for sure. Both on General Grievous, Metalloid Monstrosity is his unique. You want that first and then his leadership. Both are very important. Then B2, then Newt. They're all vital, but that's the order that you're going to be placing them in. Another 
Another note on this squad though, folks, I have a lot of relic levels on them and that's nice. B1 can do a huge amount of damage at high relic levels, but you can also just kind of like skip that if you want. There's a, I'm gonna give you a couple of optional ways to mod this team to skip that if you really need to. Uh, General Grievous on my alt and on Prevail Man, I want to be efficient with my relics and so I am putting relic three on, on both of them and that's been just fine for everything I need for them. Relic three is just fine as long as you mod him right, then he, you have no issues. Relic 8 is nice though for General Grievous just because you can actually start putting some potency on him which is important and which is impotent <laughs> and you can also improve the strength of your malevolence and that includes your summoned vulture droids are going to have more hit points, more uh, damage, etc. So it's it's worth it to get in Relic 8 if you can, if you have a crazy big roster kind of like I do. Or, but you can also do lower Relic levels, it's just fine. So with that being said, let's jump into General Grievous here. Lots going on folks. His leadership is just crazy. So he's debuffing his uh, everyone's uh, all of his enemies crit chance or crit avoidance and defense uh, whenever you whenever any of his droid fellow droids tries to inflict a debuff or a status effect whenever they're resisted and I'll point that out in a minute because there's a there's one thing that he does like he tries to reduce turn meter and that's a that's a resist like if they have a higher if they pass their tenacity check or whatever you'd fail your potency check then he gains potency so with one AoE if Grievous fails enough times, he's going to gain 100% potency because he tries, he's resisted by five different characters twice. So uh, you can get, you can build up your potency really, really quick. And otherwise, the other thing, guys, this is the, this is how it talks about the different target lock uh, turn meter gains from all the target locks. So um, when an enemy is damaged by an attack, the dark side enemies lose 5% turn meter, light side enemies lose potency, and that, I mean that's kind of relevant as we move along. But the potency, the, the building potency is very important, and obviously the turn meter gains don't look like much, but man it adds up to be so much for General Grievous. Yeah, I'll show you guys in the examples, but otherwise his other abilities are pretty cool. Model Metalloid Monstrosity makes it so that whenever a Separatist or an, an allied droid gets taken out, he immediately gets a bonus turn so he just like whatever he's at he dispels all debuffs on himself gets a bonus turn resets his cooldown so he can do his aoe his aoe is uh something that inflicts target lock and like i said everything is about inflicting target lock on everyone it also removes 30 percent turn meter and it can't be evaded none of his stuff can be evaded and that's it i mean you can stun him, you can stun them with your second special, you can put healing immunity with his basic, he is a very strong character. The other thing guys is his modding is very particular. He does not do damage based on its offense stat. He's one of the few characters in this game to completely ignore his offense stat. In fact, he might be the only one to ignore it because whereas Maul will uh, also do damage based off of his health, he is using his offense stat as well. So physical offense doesn't matter. Don't even think about it, guys. Instead, all of his damage is derived from whatever his crit uh, damage modifier is. If you put like a crit triangle on him, then you can he can crit better. But otherwise, it's all about health. You want a ton of health. So health sets, health, primaries, everything. Uh, and because he's gaining so much turn meter, and because he is he's, he has met metalloid monstrosity like he's getting bonus turns sometimes he is able to like he doesn't need to be super fast uh, and he's gaining like all like i said all the turn meter is really strong with him anyway so a uh, health arrow uh and then you i mean that's really the only acceptable if you really want him to be fast i guess you could put a speed arrow on him but you can also you want the health triangle now this is why i put relic eight on him it's so that i could I, I didn't want to reduce, I didn't want to lose uh, all the health based damage that I was doing, but I also wanted the chance to inflict debuffs at a higher rate early on. So I have 80% potency, which is nice. Some people put like a potency set in as well. I think, I think 80% is fine, honestly, because you're going to, if you get resisted, you're going to be boosting your potency up really quick. And 80 is a pretty decent baseline anyways. Like he can already 
debuff my like a nest or something a really well tenacity nest at a I mean, at a small rate at first, but the second hit is going to start debuffing her. So you want to put potency on her, and otherwise, you can see the secondaries like with protection. That's that's that doesn't help. Protection. I mean, it, initially it does, but it, it doesn't really. So health on the circle, absolutely, and then the cro or the square. Uh, you have, I have everything at six E because of his ship, but on on top of that, the square has health as a secondary. I'm sorry for the stupid bug that it makes it so we can't see the top row, but this one, uh, uh, this diamond, there's not really much excuse. I should have a health secondary here, but I don't. He does have a decent speed secondary, and then, uh, but but the other nice thing about this one is it does have a lot of potency, and the arrow also has a pretty high potency amount as well. We can actually stack that up a little bit more. I might have to roll on that a little. Um, but you can see the speed. I don't care about speed as much. My my Grievous, I mean, the faster the better, for sure. And the healthier the better, absolutely. You can put the crit damage triangle on, like I said. But otherwise, you know, potency is nice on this cross, and you can call it good. Lots of health, 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 health. B1 cannot crit. The, remember that, guys. Do not forget. He can't crit. Don't put crit damage. Don't put crit damage on him. For any reason, don't put crit damage on him. I see this happen all the time. You need to stop. Everyone needs to stop and just not do that anymore. So, B1 does a lot of things. He does an AoE every single turn. His special has a zero cooldown or one cooldown or whatever. As long as he's not ability blocked somehow, he can do it. And so he's healing his guys and that's nice. He's gaining his stacks, which Grievous is constantly taking down. But the biggest thing about this AoE is that whoever he's, whoever he is targeting, his target lock, uh, whoever the selected target is, it gets target lock potentially. So you want to apply target lock and you want to do damage. The other big thing about him is, well, there's two things. First off, he starts with a lot of stacks. And so he has 100 stacks. Everyone gains X. So everyone gains plus 2% offense. And, uh, you know, that's, that's nice. I mean, Grievous doesn't benefit from it, but then everyone else, all Separatist allies gain crit avoid and tenacity based off of his stacks as well. So they're also gaining 50% crit avoid and 50% tenacity, which is super helpful for the future tanks. I'll show you guys how that maximizes the tank modding as well. So otherwise, what you want from him, there are two ways you can mod him. First, you can make him super fast and just give him a lot of potency. So give him a speed set with a lot of really fast mods and then potency on his cross and then a potency set as a secondary. And that's it. You don't have to worry about offense if you want to uh, i think that that works against certain builds but a super fast b1 is still not super fast like at like 300 speed is is kind of like it's not his cap but anyone who wants to put more than that on him are sacrificing some legitimately really fast mods the other way to do it is make him kind of fast you still want him to be you know kind of first on his team to go but he's going to he, he, the thing is, he assists every single time a Separatist goes, and so every time someone takes a turn, he also shoots. Every time someone else takes a turn, he shoots. Every time someone goes, he shoots. And so every time your Separatist team full cycles through, he is shot four different times. And remember, every time he assists, he's also assisting into someone with target lock. So, uh, you know, or at least if you've arranged it to be that way, so you're also getting turn meter based off of that. So he is he, he's great. He's the guy who everyone uh, I mean every time he's uh every time he inf uh, goes he does his AoE inflicts target lock on people they can't hit you back if they have target lock and it's just this really nice situation and uh otherwise this other thing when other another droid ally uses a special he also gains 15 percent turn meter which is another reason you don't need a ton of speed on him so remember guys no crit chan or no no crit damage on him you just want you can have a speed arrow if you have a really fast offense arrow with speed on it that's nice uh, you should do that and then offense triangle offense cross this circle should have a an offense in its secondary doesn't matter if it's health or protection that is a worthless stat 
Uh, the speed is nice though as well. And then the, tr the diamond also has a good offense one. I'm gonna have to upgrade that one because this will boost up to somewhere around 4% on offense for him, which is nice. And then you can note that there's potency as well. And then uh, again, offense here. Now, if you wanted to do the fast build, then you'd have a potency cross here and speed set with potency. And that works sometimes. Uh, my potency on him, 95%. Uh, he is a good target for lots of relic levels because of how many times he shoots. He assists and assists and assists. You can't stop it. And so the more damage he pours in, the better. I don't think that my damage is the very best out there, but it's decent. Uh, somewhere around 11,000 for relic. Three is probably solid for him, though he's relic seven. Uh, now B2 is a guy you don't want him to be hit. He's a tank. You got to be careful because when Grievous gets down below uh, below 100% health, so he loses all his protection and even just uh, like one hit point, then he's going to assign a taunt to someone. You want that someone to not be B2 because every time someone else gets hit, B2 gains uh, has a 50% chance to gain all hit like gain 100% turn meter and take a, an extra turn basically. And then he does his AOE. His AOE just spells people and also potentially debuffs people and if he fails to debuff them then he's going to uh, gain that potency and so like against Jedi uh, there's also a mechanic involved that if he misses characters then he also has a chance to reset his cooldown and take another turn and so if you're facing Jedi and you miss because they have foresight then he, a lot of times he'll just go again and then he'll dispel all their nonsense all their debuff or all their buffs and everything his basic if you have to do it or sometimes you want to tactically do it his basic can apply target lock if they have if they have target lock already it can inflict crit damage down otherwise it inflicts target lock so sometimes you want to do just a basic with him because you don't want everyone to counter you because no one else has uh, no one on their team has a target lock and they have counter attack so otherwise you don't want him to get hit you just don't want him to get hit uh, and you don't want him to get stunned or dazed because he's going to be slow you can put slow mods on him and you just, you have to guard against him getting stunned or dazed, because if he is stunned or dazed, you don't have a way to dispel that. He's just going to have to slog his way out of it. And with a turn meter gain team like General Grievous, you don't want him out of commission. And so a lot of people will put potency on this character. I don't think that's wise, because you can just build up your potency. 72 is not a bad starting number anyways, but you can also just build up your stacks of potency based off of resists, because of General Grievous's kit his leadership and you can't build up your tenacity so give him tenacity so that he doesn't get dazed doesn't get stunned and otherwise 182 tenacity you also get 50 percent of that from b1 and that the super nice uh, b1 gives makes him up to what 230 tenacity and not many characters are going to be able to debuff that unless it's irresistible now the other thing about him is you want crit avoid on him because remember uh, that b1 is also giving his whole team 50 percent crit avoid so he's at 85 percent crit avoid if you can do it you don't have to make him fast once again he, and potency is nice if you can find an extra uh, you know some secondaries for him or whatever but for the most part a lot of tenacity on him so he doesn't get debuffed and he'll eventually build up so that you're the most important thing is he's going to be dispelling people and otherwise uh, eventually he'll apply debuffs the debuffs give you more turn meter but you don't need that if you're just kind of more long term minded it it works just fine tenacity in my opinion is way better if you want to do something else i guess you could put just pure protection on everything protection on the circle and uh and the whatever this is triangle by the way guys i don't know if i showed you but uh protection if you want you could do full protection on uh, you know from top to bottom uh, on him the thing you want to make sure is his damage or his health plus protection are not more than magna guards so that that's very important because if grievous grievous is just gonna assign a taunt to someone and you don't want it to be him you want it to be magna guard so if magna guard gets hit then b2 gets his bonus turn meter etc magna guard 
again you don't want you want to make sure do the math add your health and protection up make sure that he has more health and protection so that grievous does not assign taunt to b2 this guy's made to take damage you want him to take as much damage as you can you also want him to counter as much as possible you don't want people to be able to put buff immunity on him because he taunts every time someone hits him he has a 70 percent chance to counter them and then if he does counter then he taunts and then if he taunts then he gets to be hit and b2 gets a turn and it just kind of rinse repeat rinses and repeats it's a very nice setup he also stealths the entire team except for himself and newt so uh, when you're countering certain teams you want to pray for newt to die first because newt is annoying and newt is also a guy who comes back alive and if newt dies then he can't then general grievous immediately gets a bonus turn with metalloid monstrosity and the rate we're off to the races so for him modded almost exactly the same as b1 uh, as B2, sorry. Magna Guard has Crit Avoid Arrow because he's got the 50% from B1. He's got Protection on the Triangle, Tenacity on the Cross, and Protection. So he doesn't have quite as high natural tenacity. He has 150, so he's at 200% tenacity. The nice thing is if he's with General Grievous, which he should be, then he's also, when someone gets target locked, everyone is, or he and Grievous also gain extra defense and tenacity for each target locked enemy. The other thing I want to point out, folks, is when he does his AoE uh, special, then... He also dispels all, uh, he, so he, he does damage, but then he dispels all debuffs on all Separatist allies, which is super nice, and it works out. It's, it's nice. He can cause target lock. He can do stuns. You guys should read his kit. It's pretty fancy. Droidica is, as I said, just, uh, we're going to rhyme him away, except I'm not even going to try to rhyme. Just put a lot of offense on him. If you want, you can make him fast instead, because he gains 50% extra speed in the kit so he can be deceptively fast like my droidica 170 uh, 170 speed so that's what uh 85 extra speed so right now he's at 255 speed and that's not much but i've only got 67 speed on him you can you can get him surprisingly fast and he can do some damage not that interesting. He can assist and everything. The one nice thing is if he gets a lot of stacks and he hits, all of those hits, like if he does 10 stacks worth of hits, all of those stacks combine to give his team an enormous amount of turn meter as well because it's different instances of damage. Now, finally, Newt is the one we also want. And honestly, he's he's pretty simple. He, do, he only wants some survivability and speed. You can see that I don't even have the... Uh, I don't even have a matched set for his secondary set, just a lot of speed and uh, some some potency, or not potency, some protection and health if you can find it. Now, one thing I do want to point out, I'll show you guys his mods, he cares about speed more than anything, so he has a worthless potency cross, he doesn't care about the potency primary. This is actually a really wasted mod, I should really find a better one, but... Uh, he just wants the speed and you, you know get some protection here crit chance he doesn't care about critting he barely ever actually does any kind of crit or hitting anyways he just wants the 24 speed he wants the arrow he wants the sets and so i guess i could make him a little faster here on his cross or his square but you can see 319 speed that's maybe more than most people can make him or maybe should in 3v3 though a fast newt is kind of money now one thing i do want to point out before we go watch some footage on how to use this team is how to use uh th this team is good uh general grievous with bb8 is a good defensive team but both teams have certain weaknesses so the general grievous teams with newt or droidica are going to be vulnerable to bad batch and uh, the team and, and they're also going to be vulnerable to mon mothma droidica teams are also uh, very susceptible on defense to night sister counters now this team with bb8 bb8 has this cool thing and is unique where every droid that's with him gains 8% turn meter at, at the start of, of the start of the encounter and so what happens is my BB-8's at 318 or 314 speed and that like 
Gaining 40% turn meter boosts him into the 500s, and so unless you have something that can block turn meter gain at the start, he is going to go first, followed by all of these characters who all have plus 40% turn meter, and if you have Bad Batch, a lot of people say that Bad Batch just unilaterally counters Grievous, and I laugh so hysterically, ha 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 ha! Very similar to Simba laughing uh, foolishly, but he is, um... What what happens is people bring Bad Batch in and they they can beat the Grievous team sometimes, but if they can't stop the turn meter, Grievous can just destroy them. Like a lot of sometimes Bad Batch don't even get a turn in that fight. It's it's pretty funny. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't always happen, and so people will sometimes succeed, and then they'll be like, "Ha ha, Zareth, I told you this always works." And I'm like, "Well, it worked once, so I I hope you fail next time because you're being kind of a dick." But this team is decent on defense. Remember. BB-8 is nice to have on offense, though, or on defense with a Jedi Training Ray team, or sometimes even with Ray. So, that being said, let's go. Let's go do some film here, real quick, folks. That was the wrong button. Okay, here we go. First one, we're gonna fight Jedi Training Ray, and I think I make a one misplay. Now, <laughs> sorry about the double. Heads. This is from a couple seasons ago. You can see my face is uh, up top, and you guys can see my emotions throughout it. This is from a GAC, what, like four months ago? Something like that. But, so, um, you just, you want to go, eventually, like, this team is so fast, you're not going to outspeed it, but they don't really do enough damage, so I put target lock on BB-8 there, so the BB-8's not going to be able to counter us, and then, uh, you'll note, folks, so, so watch this, my Grievous just clicked his AoE, which he should have, but note that he targeted BB-8 here, because BB-8 has target lock, and when B-1 is assisting, then everyone's going to gain bonus turn meter based off of that target lock being damaged an extra time by B1. So do the AoE, uh, you can reduce turn meters and everything, people who resist it, give him extra potency. We put the extortion on Ray, which extortion is a great mechanic, you should read all about it. And uh, otherwise, we're just trying to, you'll note that I targeted Finn, I'm being very specific about who I'm targeting, did the AoE with B2, and it seems like an AoE shouldn't matter who we target, but again, B1 is assisting that, and so everyone's gaining bonus turn meter. Now, because B1 is... Uh, can inflict turn meter or can inflict target lock on a character that doesn't have it already when he does his AoE, then he targets Poe to inflict target lock on him. And so we're just gaining all this turn meter based off of target lock, trying to take out Finn if possible. Grievous probably didn't need to do that big hit on Finn, but then again, he didn't not need to. It was pretty enjoyable, if you ask me. And so, you know, do the AoE. Note that Holdo had a few opportunities here to be able to uh, taunt, but she has her buff immunity on and... Therefore, she can't gain taunt, even though Foresight was dispelled. So, it's all over but the crying. And one thing that I want to point out, too, on offense, you actually get decent banners. You don't really ever get 60s in GAC, but you get you get 57s against like this level of team pretty consistently. So, I mean, because B1 doesn't lose banners unless he dies, he just gets all three because he doesn't have health or protection. And Grievous usually is full health, and then B1 can usually heal someone else up as well. So you can get a 58, 57 pretty consistently. Now, let's talk about the next notch of difficulty. This is Commander Luke, and they can all hit us back. A couple things that are helping us. First off, we're stealthed on three of the front characters so that we can do our initial AoEs and no one can hit us back, even if they don't have target lock because we're in stealth. The other thing is, they're shooting Newt first. Now, if they kill Newt first, Newt's going to just come back. He revives one time, but Grievous immediately gets a bonus turn because Newt actually did die. It's not like a savior mechanic. Does his AoE and causes a lot of target locks. Now, if their Chewie had a million... Uh, tenacity we pro I probably would have thought differently now I, I was considering here doing just a basic with b1 or b2 but then I realized I'm still in stealth they can't hit me back 
uh, this time. So out of stealth now, and now we have to, if we can do an A, well, we don't have the AoE, but if we had the AoE, probably just do the basic anyways. Trying to get Chewie out because Luke and Han are both guarded. That means we can't crit them and we want to be able to crit them. Now B1, you can notice he he's the last to move almost. He's going to target Chupio because he wants to put target lock on him. Didn't quite work, but we focus on Chewie here otherwise. Just want to focus on Chewie. Keep focusing on Chewie. You want to get target, uh, you can see I'm pointing out to Chad, we could do an AoE to get more turn meter for Grievous and the rest of the team, but I don't want to get countered by Luke and Chewie. Or Chupio. So instead I just did a basic there as a tactical move and now Chewie's gone and we could do an AoE here with B2 if we wanted or we could just do, uh, I mean we could do an AoE. We want to target someone with target lock though so that B1 assists and is able to give us all more turn meter and you know we're off to the races. We're getting that turn meter train started. We get to choose who we heal and you know, Commander Luke actually paid his extortion. You can see that blue buff over everyone. That means we get extra crit chance and crit damage. We can hit Han now, take him out because he's pretty squishy, and it, especially because he doesn't have guard anymore. And now we just want to... Uh, we've inflicted target lock on Luke, it looks like, and we've, infl we've inflicted target Luke. And, yeah, so... I mean, at this point, we're... We're pretty good to go. Everyone's target locked. Everyone gets a ton of AO, a ton of turn meter based off of all these AOEs and everything, and it's just pretty nice, folks. Pretty cool, and yeah, I mean against the Commander Luke team, this this team is really good on defense. You gotta use this pretty specialized team. General Grievous does work, and this is actually one that I invented. Well, I don't know if I invented it exactly. I I came up with the idea and. Uh, maybe I, I mean, I have a video on it. Uh, you know, it's one of the common sense counters that I'm, I'm capable of making. <laughs> I don't, I'm not always capable of making new counters, but this, this was one I came up with myself. And it's been used by a lot of guilds. It's pretty fun. Feather in my cap. So now, final stage of difficulty. This is kind of a cherry picked one because if their Jedi Master Luke team is worth a damn, this, this gets a lot more dicey, but this Jedi Master Luke team is not worth the proverbial damn, and therefore, Jedi Master Luke just doesn't do well against Grievous. Like, it, it can get dicey regardless of who he's with, but keep in mind, if he has Jedi Knight Luke with him, that, like, one stun can really derail your your tr your train. If they have Jolie on their team, like, I, I've lost to a Jolie uh, before, a, a, a build with Jolie, but... Um, I mean, this is just full of garbage characters. It doesn't matter if they have relics. We just, we're just gonna just mop the floor with them. And it doesn't matter. So, like, we're just riding this turn meter train. You can watch every time we do damage to someone with target lock, watch Grievous's turn meter just move every single time. Like, he doesn't, doesn't need a lot of speed because he's gaining so much turn meter. Jedi Master Luke is gone. Now we're just trying to stall just a little bit, trying to get as many banners as we can. And this is still a viable counter, folks. This is, you know, I know that they nerfed the off meta to some degree, but this is, this still works. If they, if they're foolish and put a general or a Jedi Master Luke team down that's this bad, General Grievous can do it. And if you put enough relics on him, you can really punch above your weight. So this is it, folks. This is going to be the end for us. We are, you, get, you go forth and kill things with Grievous. The squad is a lot of fun and he can do a lot of a lot of really cool stuff, counter things. I, I like him on offense. If you want to put him on defense, feel free, especially if you're my opponent. I have a ton of ways to deal with Grievous at this point. And I think that's it. If you want to see more uses of Grievous, my alt always uses him on offense. And so does Prevail Man, and my main does often as well, though sometimes he does go on defense depending on the tactical situation. That being said, folks, thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things... Zareth prevails.